Hello and welcome to this uh, little tutorial of a couple of new features in Worldographer Hexographer 2. I'm Joe Wetzel, the creator of the program, and this is uh, version 0.87 as you can see up there in the title bar. Um, like I said, we're going to go over a couple of the new features. The first one actually happens on the setup screen of creating a new map. So we go to File New here, and uh, you're not going to see anything different, but the difference is that it saves all of these settings. So for example, if we want to change the land frequency to 50%, we can generate the map, give it a moment to go through the algorithm to create the entire thing. You also see the second big difference, which is the fact that now we've got kind of one sidebar instead of two. We, kind of, we used to have a left and a right sidebar. Now we've kind of taken those left sidebar options and put them into a couple of them here, um, and then added some to the view options, uh, to a new view options drawer here as well as a, a trace overlay drawer here in case if you have an image that you're tracing over. So um, moving on, let me go back to the to the new stuff so you can see here. Now you can see that 50% was the land frequency when we brought this back up. 30% is the default in the program and that gives us kind of an Earth-like uh, planet. Uh, so I stick to that. Um, so here you can see a second map uh, of, uh, of a new world. Um, I'm going to go to the configure map key because that's a, a big change uh, that we've kind of finished off in this release. We started it in the prior release and had most of it done. And in this case, uh, with, uh, with 0.87, we've, we've made a couple of changes to kind of finish that up. Um, and primarily the change is that in the past, in the prior release, as well as in Hexographer 1, that map key appears to the side of the map or below the map, uh, depending on what option you pick. Here we're going to let you put it on the map in a specific location. Um, so you can pick a, a water area, for example, that doesn't have anything uh, pertinent to the map. Um, these values here are what hex you want the, um, uh, the, the upper left-hand corner of the, of the map key to occupy. So we can, you know, I don't like to be right up against the very edge, um, so I bump it over a couple. And then the height is how many hexes or how many entries do you want per column, which do match up with the hexes. Um, so we can say we want, say, uh, 10. And uh, I'm just going to keep everything else default, and then you can see we go here. And so you've got that in the second one over. The map key kind of starts there in that second spot. Um, so that's a big change. Another big change is to um, the generate nations empires. So this uh, now you can set the uh, set on the setup screen. You're given how many nations or empires do you want it to generate the data for, and then that feeds also this um, this drop down for how many do you want to put on the map. Now you can change it if you want to, but. Uh, for our purposes, we'll take the default, and then if I pan around a little bit, now you can see that um, the, the nations that get generated, they do overlap, but only a little bit. And, you know, any nations or empires are going to have some contested areas, but the difference is that no city in one empire can, be, can, can have a spot that is occupied by another empire. So um, that allows us to have only a minimal amount of overlap, which, you know, you're going to have some overlap. It makes sense for historically for nations to be competing with each other. Here we had, yeah, so there's no overlap in these two cases. So that's a, 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 a smaller change in the map key kind of thing. Actually, if I go back and I um, go to um, the configure map key again, what's kind of cool is if I clear an update now, now all that new information automatically appears here, all those new features that get added, the new cities and towns um, and resources, as well as here we've got a number of um, shapes that are set up for the borders of each country. Hit OK, and now if I come back up here again to this, you can see all of that is there. And if I wanted to not overlap this area here, we can go back to the map key setup and say now instead of having, you know, actually, can I go? Yeah. So if I want to have um, everything in one particular column, I think if I get to 40, that'll give me one column because we don't have more than 40 things. So you can see how, how powerful that can be. Puts it all there in one column. Um, 
Next up to show you, the next big thing to show is um, in the view options and the grid. You know, if we're showing a grid already, we can configure it and you can change um, some of the colors and, and so forth there. But um, we've also now got a square slash rectangular grid because um, the hexes don't lend themselves to having a perfect square unless you want to kind of change the shape of your hexes a little bit. So you kind of have to pick your poison there. Um, but we can say we want to have a square rectangular uh, grid instead have it match up with the hex dimensions or if you want you can say no and you can specify exactly what size do you want each square to be and uh, how much of an offset do you want to be in case if you you know you, you want to start the hex grid over a little bit um, if it doesn't perfectly match up with the corner of the map um, and then we've also got a thickness color and opacity settings there like we have for the other things hit OK. And now you can see how that works. You know, you've got a, a rectangle because again it's not a perfect square for one particular hex and then you've kind of got two half hexes and, and so on. If we go back up um, back to that configuration and we say instead you can see what that looks like. Or if we go to the configuration again and say no and we want to have a 40 by 40 grid. Now this is not going to match up to the to the terrain um, but just to show you what your options are, you know, so that you get something like that. And if I pan over to the area, you can, you can see how that turns out. Um, but again, you know, you can also go back and say, I do want it to match up with the hex, uh, hex grid and okay. And you've got that. So some people like to have a, a hex grid for things, you know, this is certainly, um, um, come in handy for, for future features that we'll be adding. Um, but that covers that and and the other things there's some smaller other features that we've added we we kind of move some things around um, that are, are are smaller but um that that's the major changes in version 0.87 um we plan on doing another update in another week or two with a bunch of other fixes and maybe some fun, minor feature additions um, trying to move to a 1.0 we were hoping to get to that um, by the end of this month but it's probably going to be a, a couple weeks yet or um, you know let's hope for a couple weeks it just kind of depends on how quickly some of these features can get um, written or bugs fixed um, this configure map key took quite a while longer because we were trying to go with a couple of different other approaches um, but I don't think it'll be that much longer and you know the tool is certainly fully usable you know you can you can create your maps and save and load it's just these couple little nuances or little bugs to, to work around so with that, I, I thank you for your uh, interest and um, I hope you are able to make some cool maps, cool worlds. Thanks.